Alright guys, it's been a while since I have done an Affinity Photo tutorial. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create a, a stream starting soon screen inside of Affinity Photo. Alright, so uh, let's get started. I have a blank composition over here or a blank canvas. So the first thing we do is create our background. And uh, for that, we need to change the color first. So I have this color over here. If I just double click under the color over here, I can open up the color chooser. And here is the hex code for this 16151D. So I'm going to apply that. But you're free to use any color that you want. Just use a kind of a darker shade. That's the theme that we are going after. Great. So now what we're going to do is we want to create an, a hand-drawn pattern. Like in the example, you can see that we have at the background this pattern. Uh, but you can find these patterns on, you know, search for, you know, hand-drawn patterns, PNG overlay on Google. But we are going to do this right inside Affinity Photo. Let's create a new um, layer and I'm going to call this pattern and just use the paintbrush tool. Click on it and make sure that the width is around 70 pixels, opacity 100, and flow 100, and hardness 100. And uh, if you click on more, you should see this option for spacing. It should be at 10% by default. Uh, let's make sure that this is at 1% and click on close. And now you'll be able to draw smoother looking lines. So maybe something like this. And just create a random looking pattern. And that should be it. Feel free if you need to take some time with this. It doesn't have to be perfect. But once you are happy with that, then you can click on this icon that says liquify persona and just click on it this should take you to the liquify page and from here we are going to click on this icon um, this icon over here click on it and this is called the let's see liquify 12 tool i'm going to make sure that the opacity is around 75 percent and start you know, twisting these lines like so. I'm going to hit apply. I don't want to take more time on this since this is just a tutorial. Uh, and then in the blend mode, I'm going to set this to overlay like so. Let's also go to this uh, background layer, go to filter, and I'm going to add in noise to this. Set this to 15% Gaussian and monochromatic. Click on apply. Great, so now let's bring in our text. Select the text tool, click and drag and just create a text like this. And just start typing your text. So I'm gonna type in starting and then just bring it in the center. Like so, I think it's too big. So let's just scale this down a little. And what I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna double click and uh, I'm gonna change the tracking amount. If you don't see the character panel, then you can click on this icon that says character. And this should bring up the character panel. And you can just uh, re reduce the tracking amount. Like so. And then again, I'm going to hit uh, align it in the center. By the way, to get these guidelines, go up to view snapping manager, make sure all of these are checked, click on close. Uh, and it'll help you to align things in the center of your composition. Like so. And I'm going to change the color. Right now it's set to white. So we can add in a gradient to this. So there are various ways we can do this. The first method is using the gradient tool over here. You can click on it and, you know, create your gradient like so. And the other way is make sure your text is on top. And the other way is you can go to the effects tab over here and scroll down till you see gradient overlay. Click on it and that should also apply a gradient only. And then right next to this is the settings for this. You can click on it. It should open up the layer effects window and it has like more options. You can see in the gradient only you have a very few options over here. So just click on the settings icon and you can uh, view all the different options. So first thing is the angle that we want to change. And then we're going to change the gradient color. So just uh, pick any color that you like that your that uh, matches the theme of your channel or you know your stream click on the very first color and just uh, 
change it to that color. I'm going to just really change it to something like an orange. And the second color is going to be, uh, let's use maybe a hot pink ish color. Yeah, something like that. If you're unsure, then you can also use a pretty a nice website called uigradients.com and it will help you with you know choosing your color gradients but once you are happy with that then you can move ahead let's go to the next step let's go to the layers panel over here and i'm going to rename this to gradient duplicate this and this will be our stroke or outline i'm going to click on this fx icon and in here, I'm going to disable gradient overlay. Now it's just a white color, which we will disable as well. So click on fill opacity and make sure that it is zero. Then go to the outline, click on it and make sure it's checked. Increase the radius. I'm going to set this to around six pixels. And then we have the alignment. I'm going to set this to inside. And then we can change the color of the outline. So, uh, in our gradient, in our main gradient, we have um, we also have the option to uh, change the midpoint. So, for example, if you want to have more the hot pink ish color, or you want to have a more orange -ish color, you can you know control that over here as well using the midpoint. So, I'm gonna set this to around like seventy percent. So, our primary color right now is this orange color. Great, so uh, I'm going to go back to stroke clear, click on it, and in the outline, I'm going to pick that same color, which is at the top, and uh, make sure you click again in this circle icon so that we apply that apply the changes. And now I'm just going to, in the HSL sliders, I'm going to just slide it to the right under the lightness section. Let's close out of this. And the reason why we did this is because uh, we can also do this right inside the same uh, layer using the outline option over here but we want to bring in our graphic over here for example we have this character the valorant character which i'm going to copy and paste in Control c Control v and uh, if you just uh, move it to the top then you can see that uh, it's at the sitting right at the top uh, but if you want to have this outline effect that we have in our example over here it's pretty easy to do if you just you know have a stroke in a separate layer and your gradient in a separate text layer so then all you have to do is just bring in this image right in between these two layers and bam there you have this cool uh, stroke effect or whatever you want to call it there won't be any effect applied to this i have applied this depth of field blur effect uh, but i'm just going to disable this for now so this is our original image that i got from the internet so you can apply any color corrections to this image if you want but let's just leave that uh, for now then let's uh, add in some glow to this text so for that i'm just going to copy or create a duplicate of this gradient layer Control j to duplicate it and just move it to the top and let's call this glow all right and uh, again i'm going to click on the fx icon let's keep the gradient overlay as it is for now Screw the Gaussian blur and click on it and just increase that value so we can see that we have this nice glow going on and just maximize it or you can just you know have us have a neat little glow by setting it this around around 30 or 40 pixels now you can also go to the gradient overlay and you have different blending modes over here which you can play around with to have a different glow different looking glow over here um, so you can you know spend some time over here as well uh, but what i'm going to do is i'm just going to keep this to normal for now so i'm going to click and close uh now as you can see on the image over here we have our glow on top of our image so i'm just going to move this glow under the image like so and that should fix it pretty easy now let's create our second text and uh, it says soon so let's just do that so let's create a new text layer select the text tool and uh, click and type your text you know instead i can just delete this and i can just um, duplicate this gradient text over here Control j to duplicate it 
uh, hold the alt key and just bring it down like so so we have uh, another copy of this i'm going to double click on it change the text to soon and i'm going to just change the position like so we can align this to the edge of the text over here and i'm going to just really quickly uh, change the gradient so let's go to gradient overlay and change the color to anything that you want so maybe this will be a darker color of it and this one will be a different color uh, let's see yeah that looks good great so i'm gonna close out of this you can go ahead and add in an outline to this over here and for the color i'm going to use this color over here from the text itself and just make sure that the lightness is set to around 70 and i'm going to increase the radius like so i'm going to set this to around six pixels and that should be it uh, and we are also going to add in an inner shadow to this uh, let me just uh, increase the opacity and set the blend to normal and i'm just going to increase the offset so you can see what it does right so we kind of add some more depth in our text so i'm going to set this to around 14 or 15 and you can also increase the radius if you want to do so right and i'm going to set this back to multiply uh, great now we can uh, apply an outer shadow to this click on it and increase the opacity and increase the intensity and just set the angle to 270 and i'm going to increase the offset so just zoom in you can see that we have a shadow at the bottom like so i can change the angle if you want to do that but yeah let's just set the three, set it to 315 great now uh, i can apply another shadow to this i can apply an outer glow and set this to normal increase the opacity set this to 100 radius increase that as well and for the color i'm going to set this to black and just increase the intensity and radius like so um so maybe intensity is too much so let's just reduce that increase the radius like so yeah that looks good now on this text that says soon i'm just going to rename this uh, so this is going to be our gradient i'm going to duplicate this and this one will be our glow and i'm going to just go to effects over here and disable outline outer glow in a in a shadow and outer shadow make sure that the gradient overlay is checked and also check the gaussian blur and just increase that amount like so so i'm set this to around 40 and in the gradient overlay you are free to choose a different blend mode if you think that it's not working great so i think hard likes hard light looks cool so i'm gonna select that and uh, you can play with the opacity and all that stuff right over here but i'm not just gonna do that for now let's close out of this and what else uh let's see so yeah we are pretty much done you can add some more text at the bottom and then we have some uh, some colors around the image so in order to do that we are going to move to the top create a new layer and with the brush tool selected let's increase the size i'm going to set the hardness to zero and you can just go to the color and just pick any color from here so for example you can start with this one increase the size a bit uh, just tap and just move to a different color let's increase the size maybe and just tap um, put a color over there and just change the color from all the sides maybe somewhere over here and maybe one over here great so once you do that then you can change the blending mode and set this to soft light or maybe overlay right so you can see how it looks you can even control the opacity if you want to do so um, but that's how it is going to look then you can go ahead and add more uh, little tiny details to this image for example we can treat this image for example i applied a depth of field blur to this which looks really nice but you have other options as well if you go to live filters you have other options 
you also have the option to add uh, color corrections to this um for example you can add in a gradient map make sure that this is only applying to this image and i'm going to remove the color in the middle and i can just pick any color from here for this right so now you have kind of a dual tone effect on this image you have these all these options but i kind of uh, like the depth of field over here so i'm gonna check that and as far as the settings goes this is what i ended up with radius to 20 vibrant zero and clarity to 100 and then also i'm gonna create a new layer on top of this image let's select a brush select uh, a brush real quick and i'm gonna set it to white and i'm gonna create some spots tiny spots on the blades so that they look kind of illuminated or shining so maybe you can create over here and we can create one maybe over here uh, you know like so you know to add more depth in the scene you can even change the blending mode of these if you wish to do so but i think it looks really cool if you set this to normal and but you can also control the opacity over here as well there's one more thing that you can do you also have the option in the adjustment of the LUT over here. You can add in a custom LUT, uh, but you can, there are some default LUTs over here. So if you click on it, you can see what it does. So just click away and see which one looks good. And uh, this one, try 10 Ope, looks pretty amazing. I'll go ahead and uh, play around with these, all these settings. Uh, try and add more elements to your scene and make it look nice. Um, but that is basically how you can create a stream starting soon inside of affinity photo i hope this video is helpful i hope you learned something new if you did then please make sure you leave a like and also subscribe to the channel thank you so much for watching and i'll see you guys in the next one